I got to admit that in the aftermath of my last video about some of Iroh's mistakes, I was a little bit shook at the 20% dislike ratio. I guess that it was a little bit more controversial than I thought. Um, I certainly didn't mean to offend anybody. I love Iroh very much. It was clearly offensive to some people, and I just wanted to say before we get started that I'm really, really, really excited to tell you all about why The Great Divide is the best 22 minutes of television ever. That'll get the likes back. No, that's not quite true, but seriously, it's a lot better than you think. The Great Divide follows Aang as he tries to get two tribes who utterly hate each other to get over a canyon without killing each other. And the canyon is called The Great Divide. The canyon is a metaphor. People dislike this episode for having a simplistic plot, not tying into the main story, and generally feeling kind of boring, but I think it's a good time. There's some experimentation with the animation style, a clever resolution to the immediate obstacle, some funny jokes. Maybe you Zhangs wouldn't have so many sick people if you weren't such slobs. If you Ganjins weren't so clean, maybe you wouldn't live to be so old. And, as expected, fantastic original music. But by far, the most serious critique of this episode has to do with the resolution of the central problem. The Great Divide ends with Aang getting these two warring nations to make peace, probably saving all their lives and making them a more stable people as a result. But he does it by lying. One of the most common responses to this episode is that it's completely out of character for Aang to lie. Why would a monk, who theoretically works to achieve enlightenment by pursuing the fundamental truths of the universe, ever lie to solve a problem? Well, the thing is, Aang's character extends outside his status as a monk, and Aang, as a fully rounded character, has no problem lying. He lies to get into Omashu, he spends a good chunk of season 3 pretending he's a Fire Nation colonial named Kuzan, and he even lies to the gang about having mastered the Avatar state in the season 2 finale. What's more, Aang is pretty unambiguously doing the right thing here, both from the point of view of the characters inside the narrative, and from the point of view of the writers living in our world. Like, if we'd really ended that episode with that coincidental story about the kids playing the game of redemption, we all would have been far more annoyed with it. We would have called it the Lion Turtle Effect, a complete deus ex machina. Within the story, Aang is actually being very practical here. These two tribes are completely unwilling to hear each other out, and when Aang tells this story, they are in the middle of fighting to the death. Aang can't spend the rest of his life following these idiots around to make sure that they don't genocide each other. With Aang's revision of a history that has clearly already been corrupted, he resolves the immediate conflict, prevents them from killing each other on the road when he turns his back, and makes them more resilient to any potential Fire Nation soldiers that they come across on their travels. But I'm not just gonna stop there. I don't just think that Aang lying about the source of the enmity between the two tribes is completely consistent with his character. I actually think that this is the best part of the episode because it's so deeply illustrative and revealing about his character. There's this little thing that we all forget about Aang when looking at his character arc. And the reason for that is unfortunate. As fantastic as the writing in this show often is, Aang's character arc kind of falls flat just before the finish line. You must see that, right? I would make a video dissecting that in full, but luckily that video already exists. And it's a lot better than anything I can come up with, I assure you. And it has a great title. Sneezy Reviews Get In Losers Were Standing Zutara says just about everything I've ever wanted to say about Aang's arc so well. When I said Codex Entry's pathologic videos were tied for some of my favorite videos on YouTube, I was very much thinking about this little number. Sneezy is very thorough and articulate and is also just a really funny editor. Great video, go watch it. But I'll just elaborate on one point. It's easy to forget what Aang's full arc was originally set up to be because we really don't get a resolution to it by the end of the series. Aang likes to approach things from a different angle, which sometimes means coming up with a quick and clever solution in a catch-22, but sometimes it means get out of doing something difficult. He knows this about himself, and says as much in the series finale. Which is why he can't accept the fact that he should be preparing to kill the Fire Lord. He's Aang. 
there must be a way out of this. At the end of season two, Aang is told by Guru Patik that he has to let go of his love for Katara. Our man Iroh gives him conflicting advice, saying that power is overrated and love is more important. But that's another one of Iroh's mistakes because Aang is the Avatar, and he needs the power to stop the Earth Kingdom from being raised to the ground, and the rest of the world after it. Aang points this out to Iroh, and Iroh is like, oh, yeah, okay, no, that's true. Luckily, we get a steel-manned version of Iroh's argument in the series finale, when Yang Chen tells us that the Avatar cannot achieve enlightenment, cannot remove themselves from the world, because their duty is to the world. Attachment is part of the deal, so Aang is caught between two seemingly true and yet contradictory claims. You must let go of attachment, you must not let go of attachment. What the show ends up choosing is a watered-down slush of all these possibilities. The Lion Turtle is a deus ex machina, falling on the rock to trigger the Avatar state is a deus ex machina, etc. Though Big Joel actually defends those choices in a pretty interesting way, and doesn't get over the fact that it still feels very contrived. We don't learn how Aang has changed into the kind of person that can be the Avatar, just that his spirit is composed of steadfast goodness. Sneezy offers what I see as a perfect solution to this. One could imagine an iteration of this ending where Aang neither continues to be in love with Katara, but nor does he let go of her. Yes, as you can tell by the title, Sneezy is advocating for a Zutara ending, and I know that that is a crime punishable by death throughout the fandom, but they happen to be correct. Instead, he lets go of his illusion of Katara. Katara is a human being, capable of great anger and grief, and even cruelty, as all humans are. She's not this perfect, compassionate, motherly idol that he's held her up as since he was thawed out of the iceberg. So, wouldn't it be interesting if Aang literally let go of his attachment to Katara, not Katara herself? He would realize that he was actually in love with a very narrow sliver of her that he gets from their unique relationship, where she coddles him and nurtures him and acts kind of like his mother. That unique relationship that they share is not indicative of Katara's entire personality. And in doing that, he wouldn't just be letting go of an attachment, he would be choosing to shatter an illusion, a fabrication, a lie. In this way, Aang would have concluded his arc by doing what Aang does, which is find the third way out, solve the problem by looking at it from a new angle. But he would also overcome his internal conflict by not evading the issue. In fact, it would take great courage and self-wisdom to acknowledge that kind of thing, to admit that his love was based on an illusion. It's a great idea, and I'd argue even the correct ending of Avatar. It just so happens that the show chooses the wrong ending. I could lament the problems with this conclusion for hours and hours, but the fact is that those of you who agree with me could easily see someone give voice to their opinions by watching Sneezy's video, and those of you who disagree have already left a comment saying, you got baited, get over it, lel, and clicked off the video to go watch drama YouTube or whatever it is you people do. So, let's get back to The Great Divide. The Great Divide is the 11th episode of Season 1. Episode 12 of Season 1 is The Storm. In The Storm, we see flashbacks to Aang running away from the Southern Air Temple amidst apprehensions and fears about being the Avatar. In the next hundred years of his absence, the world is plunged into suffering and chaos. Running away is not only Aang's biggest regret, it is his internal character flaw. Aang doesn't solve problems, he runs away from them. Throughout the first season, Aang's anxieties about stepping into the responsibilities of being the Avatar are flanked by loss. Loss of childhood, loss of his home, loss of Gyatso. Everything Aang believes that he destroyed with his inaction seems to feed off his grief. Later on, after Aang has taken on so many responsibilities, come into his role as a protector and a mediator for the nations, the weight of his guilt bears down on him full force. The beginning of Season 3 sees him tormented by the idea that his best course of action is keeping his head down and doing nothing. Knowing this, of course, a mid-season one Aang feels comfortable lying to create peace. His aversion to facing problems head-on is repeated and chronic. You don't have to do this for me. I can find another teacher. 
I'm not doing it for you. No, no, she's not blaming you. No, I'm blaming her. I'll be outside if you're man enough to fight me. I'm sure she didn't mean that. Yeah, I think she did. I think The Great Divide is perfectly placed to reveal Aang's full range of tactics, everything he's willing to do to avoid conflict. Right before, we see just how prominent this threat has been throughout his life. To be absolutely clear, Aang is not at all responsible for the genocide of his people. As Katara points out, even if they had known that the Fire Nation was about to attack all of the air temples, Aang probably would have been murdered with the rest of the Air Nomads if he had been there. But what's more important than whether Aang is actually responsible for it or not is how it makes Aang feel. Aang is a child, and the full weight of the responsibility that he has arbitrarily been assigned often makes him feel really guilty. I can't fight them all. But you have to. You're the Avatar. I'm just one kid. He feels a child's impulse to somehow avoid this responsibility. But the right of a child to not have to deal with these kinds of issues was taken away from him. And he has to use his very limited experience with the world to somehow try and save it. In this world of adults who are constantly trying to kill each other for the stupidest little reasons, are willing to inflict mass misery and pain and suffering, who seem to look for reasons not to trust each other, to stab each other in the back, we have one kid who's trying to pull it all together. In this moment in a canyon, Aang starts to learn how to save the world. It's a great divide, like my face. Mask energy, fem energy. N, B, great. Divide. I'm a genius. Oh, so unblended.